All right, all right. What is going on, Daryl? And thanks for coming, joining me on this interview, man. How's everything going with you, buddy? Oh, it's going great. Thank you very much for asking. I'm uh, really honored to be on with you. Dude, it is absolutely my pleasure, Dale. I know we uh, we kind of uh, ran into each other, kind of got introduced to, you know, kind of happen chance. Uh, I know we use a similar company for marketing with our real estate. You're in real estate with uh, Keller Williams, right? And I'm with yeah. XP and, uh, and, you know, so we've, we've spilled blood in the same mud. You're a veteran. I'm a veteran. And, you know, young man like yourself, I think we just kind of hit it off. And, uh, and I, I just really enjoy having conversations with you, man. So I was figuring we just jump on here, throw a press record and see where it goes. What do you think? Yeah, that sounds great. And I'd like to thank you. Uh, uh, about three weeks ago, I finally got Chime and I've been stuck into that ever since. And, uh, it, I, it's a fantastic program. It hasn't taken long at all to get up to speed on it. And, uh, I'm ready to rock and roll with that. So, well, that's the idea, you know, uh, so many people in our industry and that kind of is a great segue. So many people in our industry have this mentality that I can't tell you what's made me successful because you're going to steal my business. And honestly, it's, I think that mentality is bullshit. And it is. And so I've never felt that way. And, you know, I've told you before, it's one of the big things that we both went to a same conference together and uh, there in uh, uh, San Antonio. And uh, I think the biggest takeaway I got from that conference was we need to okay, we need to always provide value without expectation of compensation. And I think if we do that in life more, great things will happen to our community, don't you think? Yeah, I believe so. And, it, you know, it's, uh, I understand the people that sort of have that mentality in a way. Uh, but there's so much business out there. Even, you know, if people will talk to you right now, the business is down, this, that, you know, if you're doing your job and you're providing value, your business isn't down. Uh, there are a few more challenges, but Hey, uh, 18 months ago when things were blowing and going, there were challenges then too. There's always challenges. So mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. Well, that being said, I mean, you know, in your few years in business, if you will, it's not a few yep. years, quite a few. Uh, what has been your biggest takeaway? Because this real estate is actually a relatively new career for you, correct? Yes. Yeah. I've been in real estate. This is starting my ninth year. Uh, I still feel like a rookie. But, uh, you know, it. I, I think if you go back and look at my career, uh, where I started at was a field service technician. Uh, go back to the Navy, I heard telephones. It's always been about service. You know, my whole thing's been about service. And I had a, I had a great career. Uh, retired at 55, stayed retired until I was 62 and got my real estate license. And it, it there was a missing part of me when I was retired. And I, I did volunteer a lot, uh, economic development corporations and, and, uh, chambers of commerce at Lions club and all that stuff. But there was a missing piece. Uh, there's just something about getting up every morning, helping people. Yeah. And, uh, that's what real estate is. It's not about transacting land or homes or selling property. I, I tell everybody, you know, particularly while we're doing a lot of farming and ranch, my job isn't to sell dirt. My job is to go find the problems and fix them so that you can achieve your dreams. And when you're dealing with rural uh, land and old surveys, there's always a problem. You just got to go find it. Yeah, absolutely. So what, so leading up to 55, because, you know, that's, I've always said like, uh, like I just turned 50 and my goal is to be 55 and alive. And I want to quote unquote, retire at 55. However, I'm also a realist and I know that I could never truly retire. I just don't want to feel like I have to get up and grind every single day. But that being said, you, so you just said something interesting. So you, uh, all the way up to 55, what was your career prior to retiring the first time? Yeah. I, uh, uh, the last job I retired from is I sold my software. Mm. And so, uh, like going back to China, you know, that's, that's going back to familiar territory, anything having to do with high tech, that's been my whole career. So I'm loving this part, but yeah, software, uh, development was, uh, I owned that company for, I think 10 years, something like that. And, uh, and retired at 55, it was great. Uh, but there's something about getting up in the morning and having a purpose. And you said, you know, you want to be 55 and alive and not have to grind, uh, I don't feel that way about real estate. Right. I get up in the morning and I just can't wait to get up in the morning to get going. I'll get up at four o'clock in the morning and start doing this stuff. And, uh, and so it, it, to me, this is not a job. It's what's keeping me off the streets from keeping me getting in trouble of anything. 
<laughs> right, right. No, I get you, man. I totally get it. And and you know, it, it's it's so true what you said is that uh, I think that's a mistake that a lot of people make in life is they their goal. They have a goal. Hey, I'm just gonna work my ass off until I can retire. And then you retire, and then it's like, what do I do now? Yeah. And, and I think that's actually probably you know, why a lot of people have like low mortality after they retire, especially the military. I mean, I don't know if you know the statistic of a career military man, like career military men. I think the last I heard is like a life expectancy of like five years after they retire. No kidding. A lot of that has to do with now that statistic might be further back in like the Vietnam area. I haven't checked it up lately, but yeah. five or 10 years ago, I saw that statistic. And I think a lot of it has to do with exactly what you just said. I think when people retire, they think that that's the, the Shangri-La that, oh, I'm going to retire. I'm going to enjoy life. But then they're like, um, what am I going to do? Yeah. Right. Well, you know, you can set in your raffle on your, with your remote control and wait for the wheel to come on, you know? <laughs> and I, I know so many people that are my age, younger that do that and they grow old quickly. Mm -hmm. You've got to be up and out and around and. So there's nothing wrong getting up at four o'clock in the morning or six o'clock in the morning and have a purpose. Yeah. And I, I, I firmly believe that, uh, uh, you know, if I was to quit doing real estate and I was to get into the recliner and, uh, watch the wheel every day at four o'clock or, you know, whenever, uh, you know, you, you, you're counting your, your days in numbers, not yours. Yeah. I, I couldn't agree with you more, man. And, and, you know, and that's one of the things that I, t I think I immediately was, connected with you about is that you know age is just a number i've always said that yeah you know, and the the fact is you're one of the you know sharpest people that i've talked to like when i when me and you and your me and you had our first conversation you you just we just connected and you picked up everything i was throwing down whereas some people i have to kind of especially if you're not in business you kind of have to take time to kind of walk them through it so they understand it. But you were like bam i got it like you picked it up right then and there it was great and I think that's uh, that's a testament to exactly what you just said is that you never let your mental acuity. And I think that's part of it, right? I think people need to yeah. exercise this thing inside in between your ears. Yeah, yeah. And and that's what I love about where real estate is going right now. Uh, right now, uh, real estate, uh, we have this uh, boogeyman out there called artificial intelligence. It's, it's coming right straight at us. Mm -hmm. And you're either, I mean, I know a lot of people that haven't quite embraced the smartphone yet. There's no chance for those people, <laughs> you know? And, and so this artificial is coming down that man, I'm all over that. I, I yeah. just think that's wonderful. The things that it can do. Uh, and here again, going back to, to do a little commercial for Chime, they are right in, they're right in that space. And it's, it's, it's going to enable us to do more. Uh, with the tools that we have. Yeah, I think uh, you're absolutely right. And I think, look, I, I love history because I've always said that you don't know where you're going unless you know where you've been. And history has a tendency to repeat itself. Yeah. People who are afraid of change and new technology just needs to go back in time just a little bit. Like, yeah. I could even go back just, let's just go 100 years back. 100 years back, Henry Ford had this incredible invention called the automobile. Yeah. Okay. And people are like, well, I will never give up my horse and carriage. I will never trust that darn contraption to get me from point A to point B. Yeah. Literally within a matter of five years, there was an entire industry that disappeared Dang. off the planet. And that is a, that is the industry of like, you know, buggies, buggies on and the streets, uh, like poor, you know, the, the blacksmiths for horseshoeing. Like that really dissolved quickly. Then you fast forward, you know, even going up until just as recently as 20 years ago, what is a, what is the internet? What is the, what is this website thing? You know, yeah. people like, oh, I'll never do that. That's just going to be a fad. Look at us now. Yeah. AI is nothing but another step, I think, in evolution. And yeah. I think you just nailed it. Like embrace it, learn it. Or it will, or time will uh, pass you by. Yeah, it, it's going to relate. Re, no doubt, it's going to replace a lot of people in a lot of processes. Uh, I, I recently looked at a company called Jointly, which does uh, uh, all your forms for listings and for 
uh, contracts and so forth and so on. They have simplified that thing so much. You know, everybody that was in transaction management providing a service, they're going to be replaced by companies like Joytlet because it's just going to become that simple. And so, you know, there's going to be a great dis- displacement. But, yeah, to your point, uh, let's just take uh, the automobile, just continue on that. Uh, I am not a fan whatsoever of electric cars. Not a fan. But I think the reality is electric cars are going to be here. They're going to figure it out. And, you know, people point at the electric cars today and they say, you know, you can't go more than 300 miles out of battery charge. You know, it's it, all these problems. So all those problems we fix. So you, you're, well, you're looking at a Tesla today. You've got to go back to Henry Ford's dates and look at the Model A, the Model T. That's what you're looking at. I'm, you know, I'm, you I'm saying, I mean, those, those those things could prove, yeah, those could prove, so, in nearly the places that the, uh, the horse could, but look how yeah. quickly it took over. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so, you know, they talk about infrastructure, there's not enough places to plug in. There's not enough electricity to generate for the places to plug in. And I agree with all that. Uh, but let's say it's going to be electric. electric car. It could be a hydrogen fuel car. Mm-hmm. There's going to be an alternate fuel system, uh, that's going to come along and you can either say, I don't like it and I don't want it. And I'm not going to use it. Or you can start embracing these things because it, it's going to change. And when, when you look at artificial intelligence, I, I just a, uh, a part of that, the job that I had back when I retired at 55 creating software, uh, I can go to chat GDP today and say, Hey, I want to write a program in Java that does this and it will do it. I know. I know. And I used to have to pay guys to write Java. I know. And, you know, and that goes back to what I was, what you just kind of touched on too. Like with AI, look, autonomous driving, like, you know, that like the, I, I see the writing on the wall where. Uh, Tesla is is uh, positioning itself to rival Uber. Yeah, because the minute that autonomous driving is legalized, which they're saying they, it's going to be there in the next five years or so, when autonomous driving is truly proven and ready to go, you're going to be able to basically take your Tesla when you're not using it and send it out to be an Uber, basically. Yeah. Send it out to be a, 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 a ride share model. And you don't have to be there and you can mm-hmm. create revenue with that vehicle. So yeah, got a friend, friend uh, one of my, around, uh, but they're going to find other places to land. Yeah. One of my agent's nephew is a, is a software whiz kid and he bought a Tesla and he doesn't drive it. It completely 100% ride share. Wow. And he, he built an application around it and everything. And then there are, there are applications that you use for that, but, uh, he's built an application around it. And he's looking for his next Tesla to put into his suite of vehicles. You know, it's, it's, uh, it, it's, a, it can be a fun world out there to okay. complain about stuff. Well, you know, the, look, I, I do, again, I look at how things have happened and I try to catch, catch the waves as they're occurring. And, you know, like something as simple as, you know, I think one of the most famous mistakes uh, in business world in the last 20 years was when Netflix offered Blockbuster to buy them for $50 million. Yeah. And Blockbuster turned them down saying, nobody will ever embrace, you know, they want to come and feel the movie and see the movie in person. Yeah. And, and I think there's exactly one Blockbuster left in the entire United States. And I think yeah. it's in Oregon and is privately owned. Yeah. Yep. Isn't that something? No, yeah, I don't know. That, that was big embrace. stuff in the 90s. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you got you just got to embrace the change because it's going to happen. I mean, even our industry is getting disrupted in real estate. You know, uh, I personally believe that the uh, brick and mortar, uh, you know, your Berkshire Hathaways, your Century 21s, unless they do something drastic to pivot, your franchise models are going to die because, you know, I think the only thing surviving is going to be your local independent broker and your cloud based companies. Yeah, uh, I think that's the future of real estate because I think AI is going to take a lot of pieces out of the puzzle. Like you just said, you yeah. have like open door and some of these that they're going to own a piece of the market share. So our industry is getting compressed a lot and very quickly. Yeah, very quickly. So I, I, I agree with that 100%. It's going to be interesting to see how some people react to all that. 
Well, so here's some interesting uh, statistics if you didn't hear about with regards to our industry. Uh, I think I told you this, um, but I can't remember, but we'll just record it here. Is like a huge statistic to show the shift in the market is, you know, because like you mentioned earlier, you know, even a year ago, you didn't even know how to fish in this business. People were just throwing themselves at you. I want to buy a house. I want to buy a house. I want to sell. I want to buy. I want to sell. I want to buy. And it was crazy, right? And then in the last nine months, we've seen a 40% drop in transactions. Not that it's become a buyer's or seller's market. It's still the same market. But we lost 40% of overall sales across this country. So the first indication on how it's affecting people is in January, uh, the loan officers who are the kind of precursors because they have to renew their license every year. And so yeah. January, 60%, Daryl, 60% yeah. of loan officers did not renew their license. Yeah. That's an astronomical number. And then just a month ago, Real estate agents, although we don't see it as much because they only renew their license every two to four years, 63,000 agents did not renew their license a month yeah. ago. Yeah. And and let me tell you, with the artificial intelligence and chat GDP and those type things, when the when it turns around, they're not going to have to hire those people back because a lot of this stuff, and in fact, I, I saw it probably five or six years ago, harder than heck in Texas to get an appraiser to come out. And so the market naturally reacted to that. And they said, okay, in all these subdivisions and uh, big metropolitan areas, we don't need an appraiser. We'll just let the computer do the appraisal because there's so many Bloomfield homes or whoever did that construction in that neighborhood. They're all alike. You know, they use the same materials as that. So they were able to do desktop appraisals. Yeah. You know, <laughs> look, and I don't know how appraisals are done out in California, but here in Texas, it's a good old boys network. Like if, if you want to become an appraiser, you almost can't do it because you have to go uh, get licensed and you have to work for an appraiser for uh, like a year. Uh, mm-hmm. And yet they will only bring on what they want to bring on because, you know, that's that's competing with that and their right. livelihood. And so it, it's a very closed network. And, and so there weren't appraisers. And so the market naturally reacted to that. And he said, well, maybe we don't need appraisers. We can just use this computer to calculate what our, our risk is. And that same thing's going to happen with, with loan officers and, and uh, title companies. Uh, a lot of that's going to be uh, automated out. Yeah. Well, I mean, and, and the thing is, it's you have to time it right, though, right? Because, like, for example, Zillow is a good example of this. Zillow attempted to take over the real estate agent's job, right? And yeah. they created their instant offer system. They went all in on buying all these homes. And they were relying on their algorithm to determine values. Well, yeah. the problem with some of those algorithms, which is the reason why I don't know if our industry will ever completely lose that human touch yet. I'm sure there's going to be a way down the road. But for the time being, the reason why you need that human touch is because the algorithm cannot ne- cannot yet, and I say yet, <laughs> distinguish that, like, let's say, you know, let's use the famous eight mile in Detroit, right? Yeah. That's one of the most famous roads, you know, due to Eminem out there. And, you know, if you're apparently if you're I think I can't remember if it's south, if you're south of eight mile, it's the hood. If you're north of eight mile, it's a much nicer area. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I and I I don't know if that's exactly accurate, but just if you can bear with me, the point being is that that algorithm would throw like a diameter and it would calculate the value of a home, say, north of eight mile and, and compared to a home south of eight mile and that could be apples and oranges. We have the same thing here in Southern California between, you know, if you're down in Chula Vista, you have homes that are east of the 805, you're good. West of the 805, that's good. questionable, right? So these are all things that- But, they, and everything, but everything's good at Temecula, right? Oh man, well, Temecula is, uh, every, every, every market is feeling the pain right now, man. So, uh, you know, I always tell every agent right now, this is, we're in winter. Winter is not coming, winter is here. Yeah. All right. So it's, you got it. If you can just, you know, if you squirreled away your acorns and you can survive winter, then those who survive will be, to have a phenomenal career moving forward. It's just those who, you just got to survive this, 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 uh, this shift. Yeah. Yeah. And, and this is why it came where I was going through my decisions uh, a couple months ago. And uh, where I hit upon time, I just said, this is the time that we're doing all these changes because we are going into that 
part of the market, right? And I don't want to wait until March of next year because I think March of next year is going to be Katie bar the door again. Yeah. Because I'm going to have so many people have been sitting on the sidelines, number one. Number two, the interest rates will stabilize or go down a little bit. And when that happens, watch out. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, absolutely. Because I tell buyers right now, like, listen, if you can afford to buy with these higher rates, buy it now. Because yeah. when they come down, it's going to be freaking, you know, it's going to be just like the Hunger Games. It's going to be a feeding frenzy. Yeah. Like I've never that. seen it before. Yeah. Plus, rates come down. So I always tell people, look, you could always refinance your interest rate. You cannot refinance what you pay for the home. And the minute they drop those rates, you're going to see prices skyrocket again. Yeah. I, the uh, phrase I heard the other day, date the rate, uh, bury the home. Yes. I, and so you're, you're only going to have that rate for a period of time. If you can afford that rate, do the rate. Yeah. Because the home is going to increase in value. Rates come down. Values are going to go up. You're going to be making money. So that's a little, you know, Gary Keller uh, said this several years ago. I absolutely believe it. And I, I loved it when he said it. He said, you know, I've been in real estate for over 40 years and I cannot time the market. All the data that I've had for all these years of being in real estate with thousands of agents across the country, all these data points that we have, I cannot time the market. So if I can't do it, how can you expect anybody else to? No one. Well, you know, you could say the same thing about the stock market. People yeah. like always trying to guess the stock market and stuff. Look, and, and I'm and don't get me wrong. I am a baby in learning all this stuff. I always tell people when I retired seven years ago, I feel like I've been reborn and I'm drinking through like I'm learning by drinking through a fire hose sure. uh, about financial health. This is why I'm so passionate about teaching our fellow veterans about financial health. But like, you know, people are always trying to like, oh, I'm going to buy on the dip or I'm going to I'm going to wait till the market, you know, get I'm like. Look, the most brilliant investors on the planet have not been able to predict the market. Yeah. And so the, what's the saying in, in, when it comes to investing? It's not timing the market. It's time in the market. And you get yeah. a lot of the same thing to real estate, right? Yeah, absolutely. Unless you find that little niche or like the big short. Right. <laughs> but even they didn't know. And if you no. ever watched that movie, those yeah. guys damn near went bank bankrupt. I think they yeah. it was from that movie, they came within like literally weeks Right. of completely losing everything yeah so yeah. you know so even those guys who saw the writing on the wall did not know when it was going to occur that's right yep they just knew it had to they knew it had to right you know just like with anything you know life is is all about cycles one of my favorite sayings out there is uh have you ever heard of the uh cycle of history no so the cycle of history is one of my favorite sayings of all times. And it, it goes like this. It says, good people create, or excuse me, uh, bad people, uh, or excuse me, guys, I'm going to screw this up. Weak people create bad times. Bad times create strong people. Strong people create great times. And great times create weak people. Here. Yeah, and that's the it. cycle of history. If you really think about it, and you could apply that to your business, you could apply that to your personal life, right? Think about this. I mean, I know that happens to me when I'm on cloud nine and everything is hunky dory in my life, and we're rocking and rolling, and we become complacent sometimes, don't we? Yeah, and that creates weak people, and that creates weak people. Then you turn around, and that then you got times got to get tough before it toughens you up, and you can create some good times again. Yeah. But I don't know where I saw this at, who was talking about it. Could be, think like a CEO with uh, Gary Keller, or it could have been, gosh, I don't know who else it could have been, but uh, they were talking about those type cycles, and I've just lost my train of thought, so continue on. Uh, <laughs> it's all good, man. And have I, I was trying to think who, who, who had this thing in my mind, but uh, at any rate, it, it went past me. Hey, it's all good. Hey, look, it'll come back, man. Like, uh, you know, that's a, I, I, I suffer from a severe case of CRS. CRS. So, you know what CRS is? No. Can't remember shit. Yeah. So, <laughs> I, 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 I definitely get it. I'll be sitting in the middle of a conversation. I'm like, uh, what was I saying? Yeah. So it's all good, man. Well, dude, I, Daryl, I, I think that, you know, you are a force to be reckoned with. I, I love everything that you're doing. 
I think that, uh, you know, you're just an incredible human being and I'm really excited about wherever the future takes us. Uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, and, and I, and, and there was a funny story I heard the other day that I really love too. And it's, um, you know, we've all heard the saying, your network is your net worth. And there's one thing that I've decided I, and you know, as my growth is I just want to be more purposeful with surrounding myself with people that are like-minded and truly like compliment, you know, me versus trying to battle me. And I've just learned, I don't need negativity in my life. And I love having, you know, a connection like you, cause you're such a positive human being and everything that you do. And I just know you're going to crush it in whatever you do, brother. I mean, the yeah. back, I just have so much respect. You're like, you're like, basically you're like me, you're starting a whole new career and you don't give a damn. He, like I said, he's just not ready. I don't care. Let's just go. Yeah, let's go. Yeah. Uh, it was, I uh, think, like a CEO with uh, with Gary Keller and mm -hmm. it was talking about what happened during the last show. Mm -hmm. And it talked about those that pull back on their investment in advertising, marketing, and those that double down on advertising, marketing, and what it looked like seven years later in those businesses. And so now's the time, and I am doubling down on all my marketing, on all my advertising. Thank you very much for time because it's gotten me out to more places in three weeks than I have last year. Uh, and it's just made it easy to do it. That's the key. Got to make mm -hmm. it easy. But uh, right now is not the time uh, to be pulling back. It's time uh, to hit the, uh, hit the accelerator. You said it. 60,000 agents nationwide out of the business. And it's probably more than that. Oh yeah. I don't know about the renewal, right? Oh yeah. I, I personally put it at probably four to six X that on who's mm -hmm. gotten out this past year. And I yeah. think it's continue to grow because the, the longer, you know, the fed is saying that these rates are going to stay at this level, if not higher for the next one to two years at a minimum. Yeah. Cause they're, they got to keep this inflation under control. Yeah. Uh, I mean, have you been to Vegas lately? What? No, no. Like, holy crap. You'll know what inflation is. You go to Vegas these days. Is that right? Oh, no more three ninety nine buffets. Oh my gosh, man! I went there. Let's, let me get put some perspective. Uh, a bottle of water in your room. How much would you pay for a bottle of water? Oh, two seventy five. Twenty four dollars. Oh, please. okay. Ready? All right. Coffee. Isn't that kind of a given that you have coffee in your room? Well, sure. There's a yeah. cure in there. Now they've wrapped the coffee cup in cellophane and put the Keurig coffee in the mug. And if you open it, it's $15. Holy mackerel. For a cup of Keurig coffee, man. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's an interesting. You can, you can go to uh, the dollar store and buy your own cup. And uh, dude, I'm going to tell you right now, man, I, I come from, we've talked about this before. I come from very humble beginnings, brother. And I, I can tell you that uh, I still order off the dollar menu at McDonald's. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's this uh, ingrained in me. So before we wrap up, how did you do with your son at the uh, golf course here in San Antonio? Uh, I will say we did not do the greatest. And yeah. I will say that I, I know it was just unusually humid, but it yeah. was so hot that we actually uh, had to pull chocks at around 15. It was just so unbelievably humid and hot. We just couldn't even finish the day. Yeah. Uh, How was it playing a championship course like that? Oh, it was fantastic. I, we've been very blessed. You know, my son being in golf as long as he has, we've been very blessed to play some amazing courses. He's played, of course, more than I have, but, you know, uh, it's it's right up there. It's a gorgeous course in great condition. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. awesome. Well, well Daryl, thanks so much for your time, my man. And, uh, dude, this is just the beginning. I have no doubt, and I'm going to put you on the spot. One day we are going to be doing business together. Yep. And, uh, and we'll just figure out when that's going to be. And I'm just really excited, man. If there's anything I can ever do for you in the future, brother, you know, I'm here for you. All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. You Good got it, buddy. You. Yeah, right. man. Bye-bye.